All right, so in this video, we're going to automatically add timestamps to our entries. I have this pretty simple uh, spreadsheet layout. So what I want to do, I want to be able to add some package IDs in this first column. And what I want to happen as soon as I, for example, type a package ID here and I hit enter, I want these two cells to populate with the date and time that this was keyed in. And one of them will be the original date entered. And the second one will be, let's just call this last modified. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and get started. We're gonna do this using a script. So I'll do tools, script editor, that will open our script editor. Now in our script editor, we have a special function on edit that will run every time there is a change in our spreadsheet, which is what we're gonna use. I'm gonna hit Command S or Control S to give this project a name. I'll call this Auto Time Stamp. You can call it anything you want. Keep in mind that JavaScript is a case sensitive language, so this needs to be uppercase E. Now this on edit function will accept an argument here, call this E, and that argument right here. See, that's the on edit will have these properties. It will have the range property, the source property and all these other properties, but I'm only going to be using, I'm thinking this too, source and range. So the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure that when I'm about to enter a timestamp, it only happens when I type a package ID in this column. I don't want to add a timestamp if somebody goes in here and adds some text, right? So I need to limit where that's going to happen. Now, let me show you what's going to happen if I don't do the limit. Let me just add a timestamp to this last modified column. So I'm going to go back here and what I'll do to make it happen, I'll first get to the spreadsheet where I want to enter this. The spreadsheet is going to be coming from this source. So that's the E dot source in this spreadsheet. We want to get our active sheet that will be our currently active worksheet. And in that active sheet, I'm going to do get range. And in this get range, which I should type correctly, I want to place that timestamp in this column number four and whichever row that was modified here. So if the modification was in the second row, I want to add here. So basically in the same row where the modification happened. So for that, the row is going to be whatever the row is. I'll just do row here. That will be a variable we'll get a little later. And it was fourth column. So that's where I want to make this change. And what I want to do, I want to set the value of that cell to a date. So that should be the current date and I can get it by doing new date object. This row doesn't exist. So we're going to create it here. I'm going to create a variable row. That row is going to come from the range that was modified and we can get to it by taking this event object, this E and do range get row. It might be get row number. I will have to take a look. So let me just open the range object and see what that's called. That should work. Get row. So R uppercase. All right. So let me just save this and let's see just what happens. So what this should allow us to do is get the row that was modified. And then we're going to take that row and in the same row in the fourth column, we're going to set the value to a new date. So command S or control S, save that, go back here and I'm just going to type something. And as you can see, I got this last modified. You can see I have the date, the time doesn't show up, but that's just a formatting issue. So if I just take these two columns and I want to format them to make sure that I get date and time, we should get now date and time entered in that cell automatically. If I go and type something here, see, I get 
the date and time there if I type something here. Again, so now it doesn't really matter where. So as long as I type anywhere, it's just gonna put that date in that column. If I modify the same thing, it will write right over it, so that works. And then finally, if I go to this other worksheet and type something, it will also just go and type it in here as well. So we need to make sure that it doesn't affect this other worksheet. And it also shouldn't be working when I'm typing in all of these other columns. I want this to be limited to just column one here. So to make that happen, what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna also get the column. So I'll create a variable and that should be pretty much the same thing only instead of getting the row, we'll get the column. So that should give us the row and column that was modified. And then I'm gonna do an if statement here. And I'm gonna say if the column equals to, so I want this to only happen if the modification happens in this column one. So I'm gonna say if the column equals to one, then we want to do this. So I'm gonna move all of this inside of this if statement bracket, and this should limit us to the right column now. Let me just do triple equals here. So now if I go here, if I type a comment, see nothing. If I type over here, nothing happens. If I go and type in this cell where it says package ID, which is the first column, you see that we actually put the timestamp in here because now I was typing in the first column. So I was able to limit this to the first column, but this will still work if I'm on the other spreadsheet. See, it's still doing this. If I'm here, it's not gonna do that. All right, so now let's try to limit this to this worksheet that's called my data. I'm gonna copy the name. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an and in this if conditional check. And I'm gonna say, if this equals one, and I'm gonna just repeat this part, e source get active sheet, and that get active sheet should have get name method on it. So that should get us the name of that current worksheet. And I'm gonna check if that equals to, oops, apparently I don't have it copied anymore. So let me go back and copy that name again. Paste it here. So if the name is that worksheet, then we'll do this. So I'm gonna save this, let's test this now. Type something in here, that works. Type something in here, works too. Let me go here and type. As you can see, we're done. Now we're not doing this when we're on this other worksheet. I'm gonna clear this. So there is one more thing I want done here. I'm gonna go back to this. So right now we're checking for the column one. That means if I go and change this column name, that's gonna also overwrite this column name on the right. I'm gonna try to fix that. So we need to make sure that if this is done in row one, we shouldn't be running that script. I'm gonna go here and add another condition here. And I'm gonna say if the row is greater than one. So if it's one, we don't want to do this. So zoom out here so you can see what I'm doing here. If the name of the tab is my data, then we want to run this code. So if I save this, finally, this should limit us to what we need this to be. If I change this, this is not gonna affect that. I'm gonna change this to last modified. Now we limited this to this. So anything we type in this column, it's just gonna automatically add this last modified date. So far so good, so we're able to add a timestamp here. Now I want to also have this date entered in this third column, which is gonna be very similar to what I've done so far. I'm just gonna go inside of that same if statement and I'm just gonna copy this line and I'm gonna change it to column three, which is the third column. So as of right now, if I go here and type a package, I'm gonna get a stamp in both of these columns. Now what I want to happen, if I go back and change this, I don't want this to change anymore because 
I want to keep date entered the same as it was before. So let's modify it is working just fine already. We want to just make sure that this doesn't update after it's already entered. So which means we have to check if there's already something in here and this date entered, we don't want to put the date in there. For that, we're going to do another if statement inside of this if statement. If statement right here, and we're going to close it right there. And I'm going to tab that in. And I'm going to say, so we need to check if there is already something entered in that same row in the third column. I'll just grab some of this. So I'll say, if I go to that same tab and I get the same row in the third column and get the value and that ends up being blank. So if that equals to blank, then we want to run this code. Otherwise we shouldn't be running that code. Save this. Let's go test this. So if I go back and enter something here, see this updates, this didn't change. I type something again. I honestly didn't notice the change, so I'm going to try it one more time. There it is. It updates. Now let me try to enter it here where there is no date created. There is no less modified. So if I enter some thing, see, we have both filled in. Good. If I go back and decide to change this, this changes. Now there was one interesting thing here that I've just noticed. When I enter this ID, see there is a delay between the first and the second one and last modified is a little apparently earlier than the date entered the way that code runs. So to avoid that situation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a new date variable on top. So before all of this, I'll just say var current date equals to new date. And then I'll just use that variable instead of doing this. And that should now be the same time. So if I go here, see, same time. If I change this, less modified changes, but date created stays the same. So there it is. Our timestamp seems to work. Comments shouldn't really do anything because we said only for the first column. And if I go to here, nothing should really happen because it's a different spreadsheet. So the last thing I'm going to do here, because on edit is a very common function, I'm going to try to move all of these to its own function so that other things can be done here when necessary. So I'm going to create a function, call it add time stamp. And in this function, we're going to accept that same E parameter. And I'm just going to grab all of this code, cut it and move it to this new function that I just made. And then I'm going to just call that function in my on added function and pass that E parameter to this function right there. So save this. So if everything is done correctly, this should make no difference whatsoever. Our code should work as it was before. And it does, no problem. It still works. So this is great. I'm going to do a couple of extra housekeeping things here, I guess. So I'll just set a variable here on top. I'll say var start row. So that will be two, I guess. So that's the row we need to start doing this from. And then I'm going to go here and instead of saying row is greater than one, I'll say row is greater than equal to that start row. So that way we can just change here if we need to modify this. I will also set the spreadsheet. We'll say var ws and that will be this my data and we'll replace it with a variable ws. It's a variable, so no quotations here. And finally, we'll do var target column. And that's the first column. And we'll just move target column in here. 
save this. Since these are the variables we're setting, I'm just going to move them on top of this whole thing right here. I'll call this variables. Get target row and column. Actually, let's call it modified. And finally, let's just comment our if statement endings. So this is closing that if statement on top that says, and if, and this is the one where we check if there is already date created. Check if date created exists, something like that. And then finally, this one is the end of the other if, which is this one on top where we check column row worksheet. And this one is and function. And that's the function. So just comments. So it's easier to read through this code. I just add a line here, save it, zoom out a little bit. So that's it. I'm just going to test this and make sure it still works. I didn't mess up anything. I'm going to go back here and type a package ID or whatever we're calling this. And it's working just fine. And that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.